in fact, to be actually in the transcendental stage. A pure Vaishnava is a liberated soul and is transcendental even to the position of a Brahmana. In the material stage, even a Brahmana is considered conditioned, because although in the Brahminical stage the conception of Brahman or transcendence is realized, scientific knowledge of the Supreme Lord is lacking. So Prabhupada saying even as a Brahman you can't understand Krishna, because Krishna is transcendental. So you have to become a Vaishnava. One has to surpass the Brahminical stage and reach the Vasudeva stage. The science of the personality of Godhead is the subject matter for study by the postgraduate students in the spiritual line. Foolish men or men with a poor fund of knowledge cannot, cannot understand the science of the personality of Godhead. No, so do not understand the Supreme Lord, the Supreme Lord. And they interpret Krishna according to their respective whims. The fact is, however, one cannot understand the personality of God unless one is freed from the contamination of the material modes. Even up to the stage of a Brahman. So Brahman is actually considered a contamination. The material mode of goodness is considered in some sense a contamination because it's not entirely pure. I mean, it's as pure as you can get materially. But Prabhupada says sometimes, when you're in goodness, you get affected by passion and ignorance. So it's not pure, or there won't be pure goodness. In Kali Yuga, it's very hard to find any environment which is of pure goodness. <clears throat> when a qualified Brahman becomes, actually becomes a Vaishnava, in the enlivened state of liberation, he can know what is actually the personality of God. So becoming a Brahmin, you know Brahman, but to know Krishna, you need to be a Vaishnava. So, my dear Brahmins, my humble request is, now that you're Brahmins, I'll make the request, as Prabhupada made it, is now that you're Brahmins, act like it. <laughs> you know, like, the boys are fighting, one boy is talking like he's rough and tough, and so he said, and so the other boy says, "Oh yeah, you 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 say you're rough and tough, you know. So show me, because he wants to fight. You know? It's okay, yeah. Show me you know, how so Krishna would do that with the demons. He said, "Yeah, you're talking like you're strong. Show me. Let's have a fight." So, kind of that idea, you know. Okay, Brahman, you're a Brahman. Here's your thread, or you're a Vaishnava. Okay, show me. Show me by your qualities. So that's, that's, um, I think a, a, one of the reasons we have problems with this sometimes is because it's much harder to do that than it is just to do the practices of sadhana. It's, it's, practices of sadhana are straightforward. You can, you do them better when you're in the right consciousness, but you can be in the wrong consciousness and do them. I mean, you can be in wrong consciousness and read. You can be in wrong consciousness and chant. It doesn't mean your chanting is good, but at least if, you know you can do it externally. You can get your body into into the temple. You can stand in front of the deities at Mangalarti. That's that's easier than than exemplifying Krishna consciousness, Brahminical culture, in all your activities. That's much more of a challenge. I and mean, I think because it's a challenge, a lot of us. Don't take it up, or and or a lot of us think, well, I can't even do that. That's that's way beyond me. So we don't try, which is a problem if you don't try. You know, because if you don't try, you know who tries. Maya tries on you if you don't try on yourself. And so, so many times in um, I don't say so many times, but often in Vaishnava circles, we see activities which are not so Vaishnava-like. Mm -hmm. so it's curious. Some are very un vaishnava like And um, when I see those things, the first thing that I think is that 
This devotee needs to learn what is Vaishnava culture. This devotee needs to learn even even what is human culture. We know, as I'm saying, we don't even know that what it means to be a human being. But the thing is, where there's culture, then there's it's like culture is like traffic rules, and you can't just drive anywhere you want at any speed. You have to follow the rules. So. You may be in a rush, but when the light is red, you have to stop. So you may feel negative towards someone. You may feel angry towards a superior. But there's culture. There's rules. And so in culture, you know how to express yourself in a way that doesn't degrade you, degrade the other person, degrade the environment, degrade everybody that's around you. And a lot of times when devotees are having difficulty in relationships, then I think if we know more about the culture, then it'll be much it'll, it'll help us tremendously. You see what happens a lot of times is we don't when we don't know the culture, then we'll tend to act based on moral judgments. You're wrong and I'm right, and therefore because you're wrong. I'm going to tell you you're wrong, and I will defend myself because I'm in the right. Okay, so on the moral level, that's true. But on the culture, Brahminical cultural level, or the level, Vaishnav level, there's a whole etiquette in how you deal with people, especially how juniors deal with elders or seniors. So how you feel is one thing, okay, but how that's expressed within the culture is something different. And because we come from a culture where it's more raw, where how you feel just gets expressed, it doesn't, it doesn't get governed, and um, what's the word I'm thinking of? It doesn't. You know what I'm saying? It's like you have a raw emotion. It doesn't get cured. You know, like you're you're making polish. It does. Yes, I think polish is the right word. It doesn't get polished by the culture, polishes the raw emotions so that these emotions can be there, which are which may be very tamasic or rajasic, but then they get polished within the culture of goodness so they can manifest in a way which maintains proper relationships, proper respect, and it maintains our consciousness. Because like, like we know, if we commit Vaishnava Aparada, it can be destructive. Right? And so, but in our culture, you know, to be offensive to someone is, is not really so taboo, especially radio talk shows, in politics, comedy, you know, newspapers. It's very common. That's the culture. Just, you know, this is what I think about this person, and so I will just tell you. But in a, in a Vaishnav culture, it's not like that. Okay, this is what I think. But is that thinking actually guided by philosophy? Is that thinking actually right? Is that feeling correct? Is that the way I'm supposed to be feeling? Am I feeling the wrong way? Even though this person did something bad, they've also done good things, should, shouldn't I be focused on that? Or if I need to be focused on the bad, how can I present it and deal with it in a way which is beneficial for everyone? That's culture. That's that's human life, and we don't have enough of that, and that's why we need more goodness, because it it'll, it guides our feelings so that everything will move up instead of down. Just like in our forgiveness workshop, we we understand from Shastra that forgiveness is a manifestation of ignorance, some passion and ignorance. It's just anger, basically. It's anger in a different form. And when anger is not curtailed or subdued or engaged in Krishna's service, it's just destructive. It keep whatever if, if anger is from ignorance, then the anger keeps you in ignorance. Whatever quality you manifest, it keeps you within that mode. So if you're manifesting anger, and anger is generated from passion and ignorance, that's where you'll reside. If you manifest a quality of goodness, then you'll reside in goodness. So 
So culture is to, to guide all their interactions, the Brahminical culture, Vaishnava culture, to, to keep them in the mode of goodness. And so you can see how often, because of our, we we're so conditioned by the modes of passion and ignorance that our actions end up being being guided and being, I don't say guided, more you could say pulled. We're being pulled to act in a certain way, which is just the way we're used to acting. Now, if, you're, if you were raised in a culture of goodness, you would act more in goodness, right? Because that's your normal way of acting. So you can see people who come from countries with older cultures, then there are certain what you could call traditional values that are prevalent in all these cultures. Respect for elders, taking care of parents, the value of character, the value of knowledge, the value of belief in God, these, these things. It's, it's part of any traditional culture. Respect for saints. Right? So, I think it's, um, I think this is one of the problems we face. So, I think that's clear. Now, you have any questions? Because um, we've gone for 50 minutes. I, I think I've said what I need to say. Unless you spark my interest in some other aspect of this, then I'll, I have to do something. My camera, I can't even see. Um, yeah, I'll wait a minute for questions. And then when class ends, I can celebrate by eating breakfast an hour and a half late, which is okay. <clears throat> hmm. A Brahmana is the symbol of Satvagmana. So, are you a Brahman? Are you a Brahman? Let me read those qualities again while you're thinking of your questions. And you can determine if you're a Brahmin. Peacefulness. Peacefulness means you're, you're not, your life is not like this, up and down. But something comes and hits you. And you're very steady. You don't get pushed around by it. The word peacefulness comes from the word sama. Sama means equal. Sama sarveshu bhuteshu. So peacefulness in that sense is equanimity of mind. The, the world sends things at you, but it doesn't push you around. Self-control, that means who's in charge of your life? You or material nature? You or situations? Who decides what you should do? You or your mind? You or your senses? So self-control ultimately comes from, from understanding you're above the mind and above the intelligence, and you're actually in control. And then you have austerity. Austerity means you voluntarily make some sacrifice, which may cause physical uncomfort, but it's good for your spiritual life. It purifies you. So the austerity may not come but because we need purification, then we do the austerity because it, it brings purification. So even though it's uncomfortable for the body, it's good for us, and so we do it. Purity. Purity is action, thought, words. Purity, in this context, for us, purity would mean pure motivation, no personal agenda. We. Our interactions with people are out of respect, they're not out of exploitation, like that. The intention is pure. The intention is to serve, the intention is to help, that's purity. Tolerance, tolerance means there are many things in this world which will be upsetting, including my own mind and my own anarthas. And I don't allow that to distract me from my devotional service, because without tolerance, there are many things will distract us. And you know how you get distracted by something, then you get upset about it, and then you focus on it, it becomes an obsession. 
And sometimes that obsession it just it takes you away from Krishna consciousness. Whereas if you were more tolerant, you would get less obsessed about it. You would say, okay, either tolerating it it's because it's something you like, or tolerating it, tolerating it because it's something you don't like. In either case, it won't be an obsession because the tolerance will prevent that. And um, Bhakti Siddhanta said, you can't, you can't really do bhajan without tolerance because the world will, will just distract you. And then you have honesty, which we had talked about previously. Don't be duplicitous. Don't be pretentious. Don't pretend to be someone you're not. Don't show off. Don't, uh, don't live to be honored by others and, and don't live to do things by which they would honor you. This is your whole life becomes a, a game of being honored. And then knowledge, which is what we're given by Prabhupada. Wisdom is the application of it, so you don't just know it, but you apply it. Knowing is just one stage of knowledge. Assimilation is another stage. And then assimilation means, okay, do I actually understand it? Do I know how to apply it? And then practice it. Those are the three stages. And religiousness, that means to be dharmic, follow Shastra. Okay, so those are your, that's your homework for this week. Become peaceful, self-controlled, austere, pure, tolerant, honest, full of knowledge and wisdom, and be religious. And then we will consider you a Brahmin. Okay? Okay, so I'm going to end here. Seeing, I don't see any questions. If there are, maybe my phone got stuck. Let's see. No, I don't see any questions here. Okay. So we're going to say goodbye to all of you. And tomorrow morning, we're going to start two hours and 15 minutes earlier than this class started. And we're going to do a class on, we're doing a class on what is love. And we talked in the last class, we, we talked, it was two weeks ago, we talked about love between man and woman to find that love. And now we're going to define love Global love, like the concept of loving everybody, what that means. Is it actually possible? How do we define that? Where does that that love come from? How to get it? So that will be tomorrow. My time in Argentina is 7.15. That is 8.15 in Australia. That should be... 4.45 in India, is that correct? Yeah. No, 3.45. should be 3.45 in India, I think. Anyway, Guru Nishta knows. Okay. So thank you for listening. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Go Premanandi. Hari Hari Hari.